remain your favorite Barbara Wadi in this channel. I keep it real, simple, and straight to the point. In today's episode, I'd like to share with you my first day in France. I arrived in France hungry and tired, not knowing what life has in store for me. So when I arrived at the at the, the train station, fortunately for me, I wasn't alone because I met this Ghanaian in Portugal and we were all going to the same place so he joined me and when I arrived my school had actually arranged for somebody to come and meet me so we met and actually that was my first cultural shock because immediately he met me he wanted to give me bisous, bisous is like kitten it was strange to me and on the way we met his friends everybody was giving me bisous and like in my head I was like what's going on like coming from Ghana you know Kissing is quite an intimate affair, so not knowing the people and them coming to hug you, uh, sorry to kiss you, because normally our greetings is handshake, if the person is close to you, then you have a hug, but this whole kissing thing was strange, so, and so when we got there, we were trying to find the bus to where we stayed, we didn't know where the bus was, I had three suitcases, like, tra pulling the suitcase from here to there, we go here, they are like, no, the bus is not here. We go here. The bus is not there. So finally, we found the bus, thank God. And my friend, the one who came to meet me, he told the bus driver that, oh, we just arrived into the country. We have no money, so can he allow us to sit into the bus? And the guy was like, oh, yeah, you can sit in the bus for free. But when the control, the control of people who come to check if people have actually bought their tickets or not, when the control comes, he would tell them that he knows nothing about it. And we're like, okay, that's okay. We are going to take, take the risk. So I was staying on top of a mountain. So we arrived. Unfortunately for me or us, when we got there, the Ghanaian who had met in Portugal, when they were trying to do the administrative check-in, the guy, the, the, the caretaker of the residence said that they didn't have his name. So they couldn't give him any room. And we were like, we left our country, today is the first, like we know, we literally know no one here. So if it's possible, we should just give him a room and tomorrow morning we can figure things out. The guy was like, no, he can't give him a room because um, he, uh, we said everything. The guy was like, no. So the friend we met who was already in the town was like, he will figure things out. Trying to remember, I actually don't remember where he stayed, slept. I don't know if he slept in my room or we found him a place. I, I, I still really don't remember. And I was on the third floor, so just imagine. And there were no elevators in the residence, so imagine carrying like two bags, like two huge suitcases all over the stair. I was already tired, I was already hungry because I hadn't eaten big on, on the plane. I didn't like the food, so I didn't eat. So it was more or less like I hadn't eaten for one and a half days. So finally we got to the room and the room was so small. It was like nine meters squared. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, this is not what I bargained for. So I just took my bath and the last thing I remember before I went to bed was telling myself, I'm a son, so what did you just do? And whilst I was trying to reminisce to actually Talk about this video. I think I actually have an answer to the question, what did I just do? Is I I gave myself an opportunity to try something new because coming to France, I didn't know anybody. I didn't speak the language. And uh, it was really far away from home because I'm the last child. So anytime I'm going to somewhere new, I had somebody to go with me. So this was actually really a big step for me. But then I gave myself an opportunity, I took an opportunity, I gave myself to try a new adventure. I challenged myself to go. It's not been an easy journey, truth be told, but I, I'm glad I took that journey. So this is basically my first day in France. And if Hello today, everyone, my name is Sheila Bombari, I'm coming from Ghana, and I'm currently studying in Toulouse. So, my first day in France or Toulouse. Okay, so my com my story is quite complicated. I traveled with a couple of friends, um, three other friends, and we didn't come straight to my city. We went to another city before coming to my city. So we were very pressurized. We had to get on the next available flight, come and take a placement test. So we came from Ghana to Nantes, and then from Nantes, we had to take a bus 
to my city. Now finding our way from the airport, the Nantes airport, to the bus station was so disastrous. Trust me, you don't want to know. <laughs> I remember finding our way. We couldn't speak French properly, so it was very, very complicated. We met people, we had to use sign language, we had to just try to just try for them to understand. Look, we are just looking for the bus station. That's all what we are asking you guys. <laughs> So finally, we found our way to the bus station. Now, something funny happened on our way to the bus station. I had this muffler around my neck and it was in autumn, so it was very windy. Now, I was struggling with my 24 kg bags, two of these bags with another hand luggage. Everyone was carrying theirs. Who was going to help you carry yours? So I was carrying mine, struggling, and the wind came from nowhere and whoo! It took the muffler around my neck and took it all the way back. Now I had to leave my stuff and I started running to catch my muffler. <laughs> so I got there. I had to cross the road. Oh my God. When I got there, it wasn't even time. I mean, the traffic light was still, you know, not on. I just got there and I was so in a hurry to catch it. The driver stopped. I passed. I caught it and I came back. Then I realized, oh wow, these people are very nice. In Ghana, you can't just stop a car like... They will you unless maybe you want to die. If you want to die, try crossing. They will hit you. <laughs> so yeah, I took it. I came back and I continued. Now we took a bus from that place, then to Toulouse. I remember we got to Toulouse in the morning around um six thirty a.m. six thirty-seven, and my land my landlord came to pick us up. Now, this man does not speak English at all. Not even my name is. He doesn't. We don't also speak very good French. So, we now came back to sign language. We're trying. This man started. I mean, he thought we could speak, um, um, I mean, we could speak French. So, he came in and all, all of a sudden, he started, my name is this, this, this. He was just rattling. And I was just standing there looking at him like, man, what was going on? <laughs> And after speaking, and he realized that I wasn't saying anything, he just paused and was like, okay, I think I know what's happening here. Now he paused and he was like, how was your journey? He now started using sign language for me to really understand what he was saying. So then, yeah, he took us and then we went to the house. I remember just going straight to bed and sleeping because I was extremely tired and exhausted. Um, after that, I took some pictures and I sent to my family. I was happy. Aside the frustration, I was very happy. Now, one thing I have realized about French people is that they are very polite. Whatever they do, they use please. These are the words that they cannot do in a day without saying, please, sorry, thank you. Please, sorry, thank you. With every passing minute, you get someone telling you merci, 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 bonjourne, merci, au revoir, merci, um, désolé. They use it a lot. I mean, there are some things that you realize, oh, these things are very normal in Ghana. Ah, but why would someone waste the time, you know, trying to express emotions or something as little as this? Back to them is very important. They want you to know that, okay, if I say I'm sorry, then it means I am very, very sorry, you know. Now, about the same politeness, I remember entering a bus and then when we were coming down, everyone was saying, thank you, have a good day, thank you, have a good day, which is merci, bonjour, au revoir, merci, bonjour, au revoir. I was like, but why do I have to tell the driver, thank you, have a nice day, all of that. Imagine in Ghana, you just go to VIP station, you bought the VIP, you get to Kumasi, Sunyani, wherever you're going, so you come down. Who has time to be telling the driver thank you and do have a nice day? Like, what? <laughs> I'm sure the driver will just look at you like, girl, you paid me. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, things are opposite here. So, yeah, I learned it and it's, it's, it's such a great thing, you know, to just to have people respecting you for who you are, you know not really caring where you're coming from or stuff like that french people are in general very polite people so yeah i think those are some of the things that i want to talk about i didn't really have any strong fantasies coming here 
I don't know. I uh, well about the expectations. Some were met, others. I'm still waiting to see, you know. Um, I'm grabbing any opportunity that comes my way, yes. And France is a good place to live in. France is an amazing place. Make friends, take opportunities, and never lose. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you so much, and do have a great day. Bye. <laughs> and if today is your first time on this channel, as I already said from the beginning, I talk about finance, my experiences living abroad, um, education in general, and travel. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So we meet in our next video. It's your favorite girl, Barbara. Bye.